your AI is inconsistent because you're missing one file. Every time you add a feature, the AI breaks something else or it duplicates the code or you straight up forget the database structure. I actually had the same problem until I started using a data model file. And in the next five minutes, I'm going to give you two prompts. First is actually a prompt that generates the data model. And the second prompt is what we're going to use to generate the features without breaking our app. So by the end of this video, you'll have the exact workflow I use to ship features faster with AI. So let's go. Just as a quick heads up, I already ran these prompts for my app and I'm going to show you exactly what you get. And in the next video, I'll show you the actual code generation live. So let's go. All right. So prompt number one, I want you to create a data model for my app. I want to create an entity relationship diagram for my database schemas, service models, and UI data. I basically was inspired from Eraser. They actually have this explanation here with the little modeling, and this is basically what we're going to be creating. So that's it. You just copy and paste this into your AI tool. And I'm using Droid with Sonnet 4.5 in spec mode, but this works in Cursor, Claude, or whatever you're using. And you can see, here's what I got back. Basically, you see it going through the app, analyzing the database, reviewing the backend service models. You can see it actually generating everything. And here we have the data model documentation, database schema, the service models, UI, data structures, additional documentation. It's looking pretty good. The plugin I'm using is called Mermaid Preview Mermaid Support. So this is the plugin that I'm currently using. So whenever I have a plan and I want to preview this in Markdown, what I end up doing is I go to this little section up here. It says open preview to the side. So with that plugin enabled, that's how we're going to be able to see that documentation there. So if you have any other window open, make sure you move it to the side. And this is how you're going to be able to interact with it now. So not only did we get back all the tables and fields for the types, the entity relationships, the service models, the UI structures, the entire architecture is basically all in one file. And it pretty much takes about 45 seconds to a minute or so. If you're using something like GPT-5, it may take a little bit longer to get everything back. So this is saved as a data model MD, and this is going to be our source of truth for now. So here's prompt number two, and this is where it gets really fire. In my app called Anime Leak, any user can actually grab one of these types of images and then feature it in the public gallery. So in my app, users basically feature an image and they go live instantly without a moderation. And I want an admin approval first. So here's the prompt that I'm going to use to implement this feature. What I do now is basically I make sure I reference the file name, data model.md that was just created. And I say, as of now, users are able to feature their images, but they immediately get published to the homepage. And I'd like to be able to review them in the admin page, then enable it to go live. So with that spec in mind, I can hand it off to Droid and it's using Sonnet 4.5 and it was basically able to run with that, have everything in context and just actually go and implement the feature without a problem. So now that we have this file and that prompt and I handed basically that off to Droid. And before I did anything, I make sure I was in spec mode in Droid. So you hit shift tab until it says spec mode. And then this is actually what got generated. You can see it kind of generates its own little internal plan to read through the documentation and that helps the language model stay on track and helps this AI agent also stay on track to make sure it grabs the relevant files for the specific feature implementation. And as we're reading through, we can kind of see it generates a really comprehensive plan. So that's one of the powerful features, which is nice about Droid, about its spec mode, is that it's able to now generate a really cohesive plan. And this is the actual specification for approval. It says admin review for featured implementation. Now that we have a problem, we have a solution. We actually have the schema changes outlined, new indexes, data flows. So it's going to be really important that you review this pretty thoroughly and try to understand the feature that you're adding. You don't want to create too much fluff. You want to also not create too much overhead because you should be able to understand it just as well as your AI agent understands it. And if you don't, feel free to ask more questions and iterate at this step. This is extremely crucial to making sure that you rein in your AI agent and make sure it just doesn't start to cause havoc later on. So think about this. Without the data model, the AI agent would have probably created a separate approvals table, broke existing features, or who knows what. And then with this file, everything kind of fits together. And for me, it's production ready. So here's what you do right now. Step number one. Take that first prompt and generate your data model MD file. Literally do this right now. Pause the video if you need to and just take five minutes. Step two, pick a feature you want to add. Use the second prompt format or reference your data model with the at file and describe what you want. So step number three, review the spec it generates. Does it make sense to you? Does it actually fit into your architecture? 
Then, and this is the important step, comment below with what your actual results are. What AI tool did you use? What kind of spec did you get? Did it actually understand your architecture? And I want to see what's working with you because we're all figuring this out together. And in my next video, I'm taking this exact spec and implementing it live. And I'll show you how the AI generates the actual code and how to review it, how to test it. And that's where you'll see if this workflow actually delivers. So if you want to see the real code generation part, make sure you stay subscribed and stay tuned for when the next video drops.